Ja, Venpas, die in Finnland. The northernmost masjid in Europe is here. Tampere City in Finland. Summer school closing ceremony in Villa Traskulla, Finland. Finland Islamic Community Center in Helsinki. We are in Finland, named as the land of white lilies. Finland was under the domination of Sweden between 1155 and 1809, and under the domination of Russia between 1809 and 1917. It gained independence only in 1917. The city of Helsinki was established by King of Sweden Gustav Vasa in 1510. The official language of Finland is Swedish and Finnish from Ural Altaic language family. Currently in Finland, approximately 1,000 Tatar Turks are living. The homeland of their ancestors was the bank of Idil Akavolga River. They have migrated from the villages in the region of Sirkac of Ninji, Novgorod province, which lies between Moscow and Kazan, the capital city of Tatarstan. The migrations from the villages in Idil Ural region, where Tatar Turks have been living between 1870s and 1930s, have caused the formation of an island of Tatar Turks in Finland. Our forefathers have lived in villages. From Nizhny Novgorod city, they have gone 150-180 kilometers away towards Ural mountains. In 1876, when a railroad has been constructed in Tampere, they have come up to Tampere. My ancestors have come in 1895. First, they have come temporarily. After First World War in 1920s, the borders have been closed. They have had to choose which side of the border they would have stayed. The reasons of these migrations were fully economic. In the second half of the 19th century, the construction of the railway between Tampere city, which was under Russian occupation, and St. Petersburg, created new life spaces for Tatar Turks. Engaging in trade along the railway line, Tatar Turks settled in Finland, and they began business as established factories. My father has come here from Aktuk village down Idil River in 1898 
when he was 16 years old. His elder brother came here before to work in a textile company. Then he opened his own store in the marketplace. The Turks of Finland, engaging primarily in textile, carpet and fur trade, are pretty wealthy and esteemed people. Our grandfathers have come from Russia, Tatarstan. First we stayed in another city, in Kuopio, when we came to Helsinki. I started doing fur business. What did your grandfathers do? They were in textile business. You started fur business? Yes, because the weather is cold here. It has been 50 years. I have worked for 50 years, but it is enough. My daughter Hajar will continue. Welcome. This is our store. We sell carpets here. We import carpets from all around the world and from Turkey too. Those are made in Nepal and these carpets came from Turkey. They are made especially for us from silk and wool. Wandering around the capital of Finland, Helsinki, you may come across a building with a crescent on top of its roof on the main street in the center of the city. Finland Islamic Community Center embellishes the cultural structure of Helsinki with its building and mosque. One floor of this building is used as a prayer room, Aka Mejit. In 1922, with the law bringing religious freedom to Finland, Islam was recognized officially, and in 1925, Tatars established their religious association under the name of the Finland Islamic Community. In Ramadan, and also in other months, people dress their finest clothes and come together in masjids. For example, in our masjid, six or seven hundred people gather in bayrams. We exchange bayram greetings and perform prayers. The association aiming to carry on the Tatar Turk culture in Finland unifies the Tatar Turks scattered around the country. It may be defined as a roof under which Tatar Turks congregate in order to preserve their language, religion, national culture and identity. I came from Kazan, Tatarstan. I'm giving music lessons to the children and I also try to teach them the traditions we inherited from our ancestors. What do you learn here? Religion, language and music. We have to speak in Tata language with the children. We read storybooks in our classes. I'm a cook. I also work in our culture association to try and teach our traditions to the children and protect our language. The community center hosts meetings, festivities, weddings and conferences. 
The administrators of the Finland Islamic Community Center endeavors for continuing the existence of the Tatar Turks by the numerous publications and cultural and social activities. To gain their national and religious identities, the Tatar children are educated on religion, language and history in the classes of the community center. What are you learning here? Our native tongue and music. I came here to study with my friends. We were speaking Finnish with Finnish people at door. But in our houses, we spoke Tatar language, Finnish was forbidden. Our parents were pulling our ears when they heard we spoke Finnish. Language, religion and culture must be taught to children at home. Finland Islamic Community was established in 1925, and in 1935, our cultural association, Finnish Turkic Association, was founded. And our sports club followed them in 1945. And there are three bases of the existence of our community our native tongue, our religion, and our rich cultural heritage. What do you do to keep them alive? Everything starts within the family. We receive training from our parents, our grandparents and our relatives. In our associations, we speak our native tongue and we preserve our traditions. For example, Finnish Turkic Association, our cultural association organizes culture nights and stages theater plays. The Finland Islamic Community, established in 1925 by the Tatars. Although their number is only a few, the members of the community engaging in trade have become a high-standing people in Finland, and paying special attention to education, they have built an important bridge between Finland, Turkey and Tatarstan. We have very good relations with the Finnish government. For example, last year, the ex-president of Finland, Ahti Sari, visited our community center. And also, the delegations and the ministers coming from Turkey visit our community too. And certainly, this makes us very happy. I send my greetings to everybody. I have been to Turkey a few times. I stayed in Marmaris, Avanya, Bodrum and Istanbul. We went to Turkey for our summer holidays because we feel very relaxed and comfortable there. The foods are very delicious and we don't worry whether there is pork in them. We like Turkey very much. The Turks of Finland have to learn and use several languages at the same time because of the conditions they live in, but they speak Misha Tata dialect at their homes. The books published in Turkish come to Finland via various ways, are commonly read, and it is not possible to use Tatar Turkic in official documents and video and audio broadcasts. So the Turkic, spoken by Finland Tatars, is approximated to Turkish used in Turkey in time. Previously published books were written in Arab alphabet, but today Latin alphabet is in the forefront. Tatar Turks bury their dead in the Muslim cemetery they own in the center of Helsinki.
In this cemetery, there is also a mausoleum built for the Tatars who have lost their lives in the Second World War. In this war, 156 young Tatar men died for Finland. After high school, I directly enlisted in the army in 1939, voluntarily. And my friends, they did too. We joined the war. I did military service for four and a half years in various fronts. I was conscripted at 17 years of age. It wasn't a deliberative choice. We were fighting on the side of the Finnish and they were fighting on the side of Russians. But we were all the Tatar and Muslim. God protected us. The mosque in the city of Yavempa, Finland, is the northernmost mosque in Europe. This charming mosque has been designed by a Finnish architect and made out of timber in 1942, but it's been used by the Finnish soldiers during the war years. The first Salat was performed here only in 1943. This masjid has been built in 1942. Tatar community have raised the money needed between them and made it with their own means. A Finnish architect has drawn its plan. It has been made of timber. There's a prayer hall, a kitchen, and two small rooms in it. We use this mosque for Tarawi and Bayram prayers during the Ramadan. Many people come here, the other Muslims living in Finland, the people from Kosovo and Bulgaria who have settled here, come to this mosque to perform prayers in the Bayrams. Besides that, we organize weddings and tea parties here. We learn our national folk dances and songs. And most importantly, the children are given religion and native language lessons here. Finnish people show interest in this mosque because it is Europe's, or maybe the world's, northernmost mosque. Is the Azan recited here? As you can see, this building doesn't have a minaret. There is only a minaret-like place. Although there is freedom for religion in Finland, and nobody intervenes in others' beliefs, it is not possible to recite Azan, because it is not permitted. Azan is recited inside the mosque. Not only in Helsinki in Yavenpa, but also in Turku and Tampere, there are a large number of Tatar Turks too. Tatars, living in Tampere, established an association named as the Tampere Islamic Congregation in 1943. Today, they use a spacious apartment as masjid and cultural center. I wrote this book in around two years' time, 
The Ampere Islamic Congregation has celebrated its 60th anniversary. That is the reason I wrote it. To find documents was very difficult because during the war, everything had been lost. I could collect only a few pieces here and there. Why did you write in three languages? I wanted to make the Finnish people learn about us too. Even though we are immigrants, we live preeminently here. When we went there, the Tatar community gathered together for the closing ceremonies of summer school and their traditional summer festivities called Sabantuy Bayram. Joining them in the community center in Helsinki, we set off for the summer school in the forest near the lake and we reached there within an hour's bus drive. This building, owned by the community, is used multipurposely. The families whose children are being educated in the summer school take care of their children in rotation. The Turkic elementary school, which gave education between 1948 and 1969, has been closed. In annually organized summer schools, language, religion and national culture lessons are given to the children of the families living in various places of the country. This boarding school also establishes an environment for the children to socialize, to strengthen the friendship bonds, and so lays a foundation for them to be able to act in a community together in the future. We came here to carry on our old traditions. We met in such a camp the first time when we were children. We come here voluntarily to learn our culture. Our child makes friends with other children here. On the last day of summer school, students demonstrate what they've learned and with their families they celebrate Tata's traditional Sabantu summer festivities. Since the end of the 1920s, this festivity has been organized by our community almost every year. It has been organized in various places before, but 15 years ago, this camp place, Villa Trascula, was bought by our community. And since then, we use this place. This year, 16 students came here. Taking advantage of this opportunity on behalf of our community, I want to thank you all respectful parents for sending your children to this camp. Because education is one of the most important activities of our community. Certainly, the parents educate their children at their homes. But our community organizes classes on religion, native tongue and other subjects for our children. What about giving the baby a name? Then I invite you to the ceremony of giving a name to the baby. Faisal and Irek show us how this ceremony is made. Hey, 
In the land of white lilies, sharing the same joys and distresses with the Finnish people, having lost their 156 young sons in the Second World War, and having built the northernmost mosque of Europe, Tatar-Turks, although their population decreased significantly, are still continuing to preserve their religion, language and national identity resolutely. In this documentary, we got acquainted with Karai Turks living in Lithuania, Poland, Crimea and Turkey, who are on the verge of extinction. We went to Hungary and we wandered amongst our relatives, the Kumans, Aka Kipchak Turks, who have been living unknown to us in Little Kumania and Great Kumania since 1200s. We visited the Tatar Turks, who have been living in Lithuania and Poland with their mosques, villages and traditions since the 1400s. As we know them better, we love them better. Don't forget the Tatars living in Lithuania. Give Polish Tatars regards to the Muslims in Turkey and especially to Istanbul. We send our greetings to everyone in Turkey from Bohoniki. Our Turkic brothers and relatives came to us. We are very glad about this visit. My wish is this. Don't forget us.